How's it going guys? It is I, the Alta Gaming here, here recording a brand new video. This time we'll be doing a review for you guys, and today I will be reviewing The Last of Us, available exclusively for the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. And if you guys really like these kind of reviews, all you have to do is leave a comment down below, and also make sure to hit that subscribe button, because every subscriber that I get not only helps me out a lot, but also verify me to build more videos for my YouTube channel. And without further ado, let's get on to this video. Now, The Last of Us is a third-person survival action game that utilizes choices and gameplay action to develop the game's storyline, as well as the relationship between the two main characters, Joe and Ellie. Now, The Last of Us is made exclusively for the PlayStation 3 console. The game features a combination of combat, exploration, stealth, and platforming game mechanics. Although Joe and Ellie are both residents of the post-apocalyptic world, they have had different experiences that affect the way they see the world around them and feel about what they see and do. Joe had a life before the pandemic, while the world of pandemic is, is all that Ellie has ever known. As part of Joe's job to smuggle Ellie out of the quarantine zone, players have to make choices in how they deal with enemies, which include roving gains of human scavengers, not unlike themselves, military elements, and infected civilians. Players also have an opportunity to interact together with elements of the world around them, which helps to build the bond between Joe and Ellie. Resources in the game are safe or secure, making overwhelming use of firepower unlikely and unwise in conflict and resource gathering missions. In addition, most of the other residents of the ruined world that are encountered are just trying to survive, blurring the line between good guys and bad guys. Finally, game AI react differently depending on the specifics of the player's actions making choice in gameplay a major consideration. The Last of Us is simply one of the best games I have ever played. It is that simple. The Last of Us is really about as good as games get. Don't be scared by the premise. Naughty Dog has crafted something that reaches far and wide delivering an experience that's a skin to playable drama film. Wash away those horrible memories of the House of the Dead and put your fears away. The Last of Us is simply incredible. Now, The Last of Us is a tale that takes inspiration from various works in the genre it works with, most notably The Road, No Country for Old Men, and The Walking Dead. While forging its own path to create something equally memorable and carving out of its own path that sets it apart from all of its inspirations beforehand, what may sound like B-movie on paper has been transformed by Naughty Dog into something no short of a masterpiece. While Star Wars games like Resident Evil are so horribly done that they make Ed Wood look like George Baradon Shaw, The Last of Us is an instant classic that would rightly belong in the Criterion Collection or right next to an art film. Naughty Dog has really done, has really outdone something to themselves, and they have done something entirely else. Naughty Dog has created something that feels so real and tangible for today's society. Through the epidemic, certainty has ravaged the lives of so many people by turning them into horrible creatures. The Last of Us isn't so much a zombie-based horror flick as it is a tough, deeply woven drama with the vision that reaches far and wide. The Last of Us stars, stars Joe and Ellie, which are two amazing characters who are the heart and soul of this incredible journey. What follows these two incredible characters is a journey that will test your limits as it touches upon society as a whole in ways that I myself wasn't expecting. At its core, what happens when society is collapsing? What is the, cap the, ca the capacity that man would do in order to survive? How far would you go? The Last of Us may seem simple, but it hides under this and explores the implications of society's horrified ability to crack underneath the pressure. Or, on a more simple but wider note, what it would mean to live in a such a world. What follows is a brutal but often beautiful journey that touches upon the lies and delicately explores all the turbulence one upon expect when society breaks down from a horrible apocalypse. It's a thematically rich and touching tale which oceans of, of satire and resulting details that should take far more than time to grasp then lightweight fiction would ask of you to do so. Take it all in, appreciate it, read everything that comes to you, and don't be afraid to put all of what you know and what imply during the situations that unfold throughout this extremely long journey. For my catch, this is one of the best stories I've ever encount encountered in The Last of Us. Now, the visuals and sound are two of the video game's medium's greatest strengths, and you can be sure Naughty Dog knows this. 
Visuals are amazing and absolutely essential to the experience using the power of the PlayStation 3 to make experience irreversibly absorbing. Sure, the technical aspect of The Last of Us are first rate, but the artistic vision of the game is where it truly shines. The environments are absolutely packed with detail and build a frightfully immersed and believable world. It feels real as you traverse it, whether it's crawling through a decrypted hole, hotel, a horribly bleak, ruined convenience store, the rancid and dehumanization quarantine zones, or the serene and calm realm of nature that has overtaken humanity. The world in The Last of Us is telling and a character in, in itself. Animations, especially facial animations, are t also top notch. Facial animation can indeed make or a break a character's emotional resonance. You might have heard of the Uncanny Valley, and Naughty Dog makes sure The Last of Us does not break the emotional part. Simply put, The Last of Us is a beautiful game, both technically and artistically. Sound is also amazing as well. The soundtrack composed by the two-time Oscar winner Gravasto Satolia, sorry if I butcher his name, plays a big part in the game's experience. The score is sparse, but it is effective in bringing a bleak and beautiful sense of isolation, also not forgetting to puncture the game's most harrowing moments with appropriate menace. At its softer moments, it's tinged with a particularly Americana melancholy, which perfectly evokes the kind of Western feel one would get reading Blood Meriden's most beautiful moments. Sound design is also terrific. It makes sure that the entire world comes to life in a dizzying amount of different ways. It makes the violence also too harrowing, the sound of the zombies horrifying, and makes this, the space you traverse feel real. An active experience indeed. No matter if you feel sorrow or dread, happiness or solitude, sound is there to make sure your experience comes to life. Also, the acting performances are on a whole another level. Troy Baker, in particular, absolutely needs recognition for his performance. The intro, oh my god, that intro. But everybody else does a fantastic job, led by Druckmann's ex exceptional script. The, por the performances feel so understandable, quiet, and very human. It's often simple and direct delivery unexpectedly leads to death, getting to the lives of these people and how they relate to the apocalypse. The turbulence of such an event, the fear, the loss, the suffering, and brutality of the world around and beauty and the heart in the most unexpected of places, its pristine delivery with such delicate crystal clarity and nudience, makes sure every spoken word lineares in the air with such believable weight, no matter how uncomfortable or violently dark, savage these people will get, you will still understand them clearly. When these characters speak, you simply feel these human beings within yourself. As terrific as all of this is, graphics and sound aren't the most important aspect of storytelling. Gameplay is what completes a video game narrative. Ever since the media's inception, games have been struggling to properly mesh gameplay and narrative, especially games with a heavy emphasis on combat. I'm not going to be pointing fingers at any particular game here. It really all comes to one's subjective player experiences, but there is no doubt games have been hobbed by this design flaw. Luckily, The Last of Us adverts this with an absolution skill. The Last of Us made sure that gameplay did become second nature, and as a result, it has to be one of the best examples of seamless meal of gameplay and story. True to its survival horror roots, The Last of Us has nailed its goal of violence and gameplay as an art form, and as a result, the game is very intense, horrifying, brutal, and gritty as a player authority experience. The Last of Us is a survival piece of art. Be of no, this game needs to be played on the highest difficulty in order to truly make it a harrowing experience to interact with. Emotionally attach yourself on hard, and once you unlock survivor mode, bite the bullet and never in turn lax the emotion. With little resources available to you and enemies that can kill you in one or two hits, assuming if you're playing on the higher difficulty. The Last of Us is a frightening day, real as the games get. Your best bet whenever possible is to avoid combat as much as you can and cling to your risk in order to make it out alive of any situation. If not, be prepared for some in chilling engagements. The Last of Us is horrifically, horrifically violent, so brutal that the game can really be harrowing in a way that few video games ever hope to achieve. Oh, and you severe with an almost overwhelming sense of nausea. While some complained about the Amy, I thought it only made the game more nerve-wracking. It's not very impossible to get used to the Amy either. I think this is a valid complaint for those who aren't willing to deal with it. But it makes sure that the cover-based moments still feel dangerous despite being a cover. 
It's like a playable No Country for Men, which is the highest praise I can give this game. Mechanically, The Last of Us doesn't feature the complexity of EVE Online, but it opens up very well enough as you go through the game. True to its genre, the game rewards exploration and scoundering and a variety of supplies. You can craft numerous weapons that help you creatively, both offensively and defensively, such as sticky grenades, smoke bombs, Molotov cocktails, shivs, blade on melee weapons, and more. In addition, numerous amounts of upgrades to both your character through medicine and your weapons through upgrades means that you will adapt and evolve throughout the game. Better health, faster crafting times, less swaying, and many others will enhance the player's character. For the weapons, expect better reload times, a few enhancements, the ability to hold more ammunition, additional weapon slots, saving your character the agony of having to go through a backpack, and much, much more. Even better, the New Game Plus mode makes sure that you can play through the game more than once and build upon the arsenal you had in your last game. While the game story presentation and its merge of gameplay and narrative, it's almost so damn perfect, or at least close, considering perfection is nearly impossible. I do have to point out some of the flaws in the gameplay, mostly due to minor gameplay lapses. I found the highest difficulty mode to be extremely challenging without breaking my engagement, but there are some spots of the campaign that felt unbalanced and cheap. Battling against enemies has the weird bullet sponge feel, and it's often annoying when facing soldiers. The annoying fiddleness of the survival horror genre doesn't fully advert The Last of Us, much like System Shock 2 in such a way. With combat sections that turn the game's balance from challenging to unbalanced, luckily this happens very infrequently, and the game is still mechanically satisfying. However, just keep in mind when you play through The Last of Us because moments like these will come up. I'll leave the multiplayer to other people if they want to talk about it. It's great, but you can ignore it altogether like a bonus track because the single player is just phenomenal. All I'm saying is this. Believe the hype when it comes to The Last of Us. The Last of Us is an incredible as an experience that Naughty Dog deserves your money for a single player alone. The Last of Us is not only just a superb video game, but it's a brilliant shakeup that this industry sorely needs. I remember reading an interview that they wanted to raise the story bar with The Last of Us and turn and in turn make it other developers scramble for the cover. This was the end goal Naughty Dog wanted to achieve with this release. Well, I, I have to give you my round of applause, Naughty Dog. You succeeded. The Last of Us is another success for Naughty Dog on a storytelling level and for the medium as a whole. It's a masterpiece, one of the best games of 2013, a game of the generation, and one of the best games I have ever played. If you have a PlayStation 3, or a PlayStation 4, I don't own this game, go ahead and buy this game right now. So there you have it, you guys, is my review for The Last of Us. If you guys really enjoyed this video, please leave a comment section down below, and also make sure to hit that subscribe button. It will really help me out a lot. If I had to give a score for The Last of Us, it would definitely be a 10 out of 10. This game deserves to be in your PlayStation, in your PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 collection. If you're a friend of Naughty Dog, who love the Uncharted series and Crash Bandicoot, The Last of Us deserves to be played in your collection. If you're a fan of survival horror with action elements involved stealths and a beautiful art style in the world of a post-apocalyptic setting, this game is meant to be in your collection. 10 out of 10 for the story, the amazing voice acting, and everything else the game has been delivered. So, if you're a fan of Naughty Dog, definitely get The Last of Us. Anyway, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be on the lookout for another one coming soon, right here on my YouTube channel. Get the fuck out, my friends. How's it going, guys? The Ultimate Gamer here again. Here we're doing another review for you guys. Today, I'll be reviewing Beyond Two Souls, the special GameStop edition, exclusively on the PlayStation 3. Now, before I even get started with this review, if you guys really enjoyed these type of videos and want to see more from my channel, all you gotta do is leave a comment section down below in, in the comments box, and also make sure to hit that subscribe button. It will really help me out a lot. Every subscriber that I do get will inspire myself to build more videos and repetition for my YouTube channel. And without further ado, let's get on to the review for Beyond Two Souls, exclusively on the PlayStation 3 console. Now, Beyond Two Souls is a single-player action game that utilizes a combination of superior storytelling and gameplay mechanics and cutting-edge motion capture techniques to 
present a stunning adventure that is not to be missed. The game is a PlayStation 3 exclusive and features an in-game timeline set across several years of the player's character's life and experiences, several possible endings and outcomes, a unique and powerful in-game companion, and an in-game contribution by top Hollywood talent. From the makers who brought you Heavy Rain comes a unique psychological action thriller video game. Featuring a brand new game engine, a compelling original story, and a top-notch Hollywood cast, including Ellen Page, who I'm a big fan of, and she's currently my favorite actress as of now, who brought you Juno, Whip It, and Inception. Beyond Two Souls promises to be one of the most immersive experiences on the PlayStation 3's life cycle. Now, you live the life of Jody Holmes, a, who is a very young woman who possesses extraordinary powers through a psychic link to an, an invisible entity. Experience the most striking moments of Jody's life as your actions and decisions determine her fate. As you traverse the globe, Jody will face incredible challenges against a backdrop of emotionally charged events never before seen in a video game. Beyond Two Souls tells the story of a girl named Jody, who has a special gift. She's tied to a tendency from a spirit realm that gives her special abilities. There are those who want to help her learn to use her abilities, and there are those who would exploit them. Jody must navigate a world where she learns who can tr she can trust and who she needs to be aware wary of. But Beyond Two Souls is so much more than that. This game has more than most Hollywood blockbuster films. In its first 10 hours or so of playtime, you will find yourself not wanting to sleep so that you can keep playing to find out what happens next. Using an unconventional storytelling technique, the game is divided up into chapters. Each chapter covers a certain event in Jody's life cycle. The chapters aren't put together in a very linear fashion, but are given to the player as puzzle pieces. You might learn something about Jody's childhood, but then you'll experience her later adult years, followed by her teen years. These puzzle pieces create a whole story that is not only compelling, but downright beautiful. Yeah, I'll admit, this game does have several motion parts here and there. That's just because of how good Beyond Two Souls was. But it's so much more than the story itself. The gameplay is an interactive experience unlike anything I've ever played before. It doesn't require standard gaming technique, but you do need to be quick with the controller to carry out certain actions that will affect up how, how each chapter in the game itself plays out. There are often multiple choices available, and each determines the path that Jody's lives take. The overall effect is one that immerses you in the game unlike anything you've ever experienced before. A lot of this has to do with the fine voice acting, obviously putting Ellen Page and William Dafoe behind the voices of the two main characters is going to guarantee excellent acting, but even the secondary characters feel real and natural. Add to that some of the most beautiful graphics you will ever see in a PlayStation 3. Seriously, you can see each freckle on Jody's face, and this game feels more real than anything you might ever find on television. But there were so many different environments that you were put into, in des from a desert, from a from a war-torn third world country desert, CIA building, and even an underwater military station, and each one looked great. Iden as Jody's mysterious identity companion was an interesting and fun experience, and it was cool to see the different ways in which he is utilized throughout the story. The voice acting was amazing all the way around, which enhanced the mocap into not only seeing life life characters, but hearing and feeling them as well. Like Heavy Rain, there are some quick, tech event, quick time events, but with the, this game, it employs bullet time in which Jody's engaged in some type of action and time slows for a second, and you must direct your analog stick to follow her motion, which I feel is a superior and more fluid method than button mashing. Beyond Two Souls was very frustrating at times, slow at others, but I couldn't keep the controller down and wound up with an amazing experience that I soon will not forget. Now, if I had to give a score for Beyond Two Souls for the PlayStation 3 console, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. It is really a really, really good game. If you guys really enjoyed Quantum Dreams products that, that had Heavy Rain and Indigo Prophecy, and if you love a game featuring psychological thriller moments, action, adventure, horror, and all around a beautiful top-notch story with amazing character designs and one of the best... Uh, visuals from the PlayStation 3 era, you will definitely enjoy Beyond Two Souls. Um, if you guys really enjoyed this short this short review for Beyond Two Souls, 
leave a comment section down below and also make sure to hit that subscribe button. It will really help me out a lot. As always, be on the lookout for another review video right here on my YouTube channel. Get the fuck out, my friends. How's it going, guys? Thialta Gamer here again doing another review. This time I will be reviewing Tomb Raider, available for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PC, OS, PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One. If you guys really enjoyed this review, leave a comment section down below and also make sure to hit that subscribe button because every subscriber that I get will help notify me to build more videos for my YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's get on to the video. Now, Tomb Raider is an action-adventure video game published by Square Enix. Tomb Raider is the fourth title developed by Crystal Dynamics in the Tomb Raider franchise. As the first entry in a new Tomb Raider continuity, this game is a reboot that emphasizes the reconstruction origins of the culturally influential lit character of Laura Croft. Now, Tomb Raider is presented in a third-person perspective. Players take control of the series' lead character, Laura Croft. The game uses an interconnected hub and spoke model that combines action, adventure, exploration, and survival mechanics. Players can traverse between the camps and, and across the island using footpaths, improvised, or already available zip lines and climbable tracks. Many of the players' moves are carried over from the previous games created by Crystal Dynamics, with some twe tweaks added, such as incorporating elements of stealth gameplay. Quicktime events are scattered at regular intervals throughout the game, often appearing at crucial or fast-moving points in the game's plot, such as extracting a shard of metal and escaping a collapsing cave. The combat of the game borrows multiple elements from Naughty Dog's Uncharted series with players having the ability to free aim Laura's bow and the guns she salvages, engage in close quarter combat and perform stealth kills. Players can also use survival instinct, an ability in which enemies, collectibles, and objectives pivotal to environmental puzzles will be highlighted for the players. <clears throat> the game will also incorporate RPG elements as players progress through the game. They earn experience points for performing certain actions and completing in-game challenges linked with hunting, exploring and combat. This enables player skills and abilities to be upgraded in specific ways such as giving her more storage capacity for arrows and ammunition. Players can also upgrade and customize weapons using salvage collected across the island. There is also a character progression mechanic in the game. Better items, weapons and equipment are also gained as players progress through the appearance of most of these items is closely linked to the events of the story. In addition to the main story, players can complete multiple side quests, explore the island, revisit locations, and search for challenged tombs. Now let's talk about multiplayer that is first introduced in the Tomb Raider entry. Now the two, the alongside the single player mode is the online multiplayer mode, which allows players to compete in several maps. Each multiplayer match, there are two enemy teams, four survivors and four scavengers, and there are three types of games for multiplayer to compete in. Played in five different maps, the modes are team deathmatch, private rescue, and cry for help. The first mode is simple, player versus player combat scenario, with teams pitted against each other, and the winning team being the one to kill of the opposing team in three separate matches. In the second mode, the survivor's team must take medical supplies to a specific point on the map, while the scavengers must reach a certain number of kills, both within a 10 minute time limit. The third mode, Cry for Help, involves the survivors exploring the maps and retrieving batteries for defended radio beacons while being hunted by the scavengers. Across all three modes, weapons and destroyable environments for the single player campaign are carried over. Now, the story of a Tomb Raider takes on the role of Laura Croft who was a young and ambitious archaeologically graduate whose theories on the location of the Lost Kingdom of Yamatai have convinced the Nishimura family, descendants from the people of Yamatai themselves, to fund an expedition in search of the kingdom. The expe expedition is led by Dr. James Whitman, a celebrity archaeologist who has fallen on hard times and is desperate to avoid bankruptcy, and is accompanied by Conran Roth. Roth, a royal marine turned adventurer and close friend of the Croft family who severs as a mentor to Laura. Samantha Sam Nishimura, Laura's friend and a representative of the Nishinorma family who films the expedition of a documentary. Jocelyn Reyes, a skeptical and temperamental mechanic and a single mother. Uh, Jonah Mapaya, an opposing and placement fisherman who was willing to believe in the existence of the paranormal and extraordinary Angus Grimm Dramali, the Griff. Grossman Halishman of the Endurance and Alex Wes, a goofy and bespeculated electronics specialist. The game begins with Laura Croft setting out on her very first expedition aboard the ship Endurance with the intention of finding the lost kingdom of Yamatai. By her suggestion and against Whitman's advice, the expedition ventures into the Dragon's Triangle east of Japan. 
The ship is struck by a violent storm and shipwrecked, leaving the survivors stranded on an isolated island. Laura is separated from the others and captured by a strange savage man. She manages to escape while her captor is killed as the cave collapses due to her actions. As Laura tries to locate the other survivors, she finds more evidence that the island is inhabited, such as strange carvings, dead bodies, and animal sacrifices. She eventually finds her friend Sam and a man called Matthias, who claims to be a teacher who has shipwrecked on the island. As Sam tells Matthias the legends of Himako, Laura passes out. When she wakes, Matthias and Sam are nowhere in sight. When Laura regroups with the other survivors, Whitman decides to go with Laura and search for the still missing Roth, while the rest of the group, Ray, Jonah, Alex, and Graham, set out to find Sam and Matthias. As Laura and Whitman explore, they discover that the island's inhabitants are worshipping Himako, confirming that the island is Yamatai. Upon discovering a shrine erected in Himako's name, they are captured by the islanders and taken to a settlement along with several other survivors from the Endurance. When the survivors attempt an escape, the captors turn on them. Laura is separated from Whitman and tries to hide, but she is found by one of the islanders and forced to kill them. She fights off the remainder of the attackers and reunites with Roth, saving him from a wolf attack. Laura manages to activate a radio tower and call for help, but the plane that answers the call is struck by a freak storm, and Laura hears a mysterious voice saying, No one leaves in Japanese. Unable to save the surviving plots, pilots, Laura is contacted by Alex and Reyes, who reveal that Sam has been kidnapped by the Islanders, a violent cult known as the Solari Brotherhood. Laura tries to rescue her, but is stopped by Matthias, leader of the Solari, and order killed. She is saved by an attack from samurai like Oni, escaping the ancient monastery where she is taken by the Oni. She hears from Sam that Matthias is going to put her through the incension, a fire ritual, to find the next Sun Queen that will burn her to death if it is unsuccessful. Laura follows them to the Solari Fortress and is aided by Grimm. The Solari take Grimm hostage, but he sacrifices his health too so Laura can escape. With Roth's aid, Laura infiltrates the fortress and sees the ritual begin. When the fires are lit, a great wind blows them out, showing Sam to be the next Sun Queen. Laura escapes again and reunites with her friends, forming a plan to rescue Sam and escape. Aided by Whitman, who has managed to negotiate some degree of freedom with the Solari, Laura returns to the palace to rescue Sam as Roth commandeers a helicopter to get them out. Laura succeeds, but persuades Sam to escape by land when she sees another storm gathering as the helicopter approaches. As Laura tries to force the helicopter pilot to land, they are brought down with Laura nearly dying. Roth re revives Laura, then takes a fatal blow from Matthias meant for Laura. While mourning Roth, Laura accepts that the storms are not natural, but are somehow connected to the Sun Queen and designed to prevent anyone from leaving the island. Now she meets up with other survivors who have invaded the Solari long enough to secure a boat for escaping the island, provided that it can be repaired. They are joined by Whitman, who claims to have escaped, though Laura begins to, sus to suspect him of working with the, cult the cultists. Laura and Alex find parts for the abort in the wreck of the Endurance. They come under attack by the Solari, and Alex triggers an explosion, sacrificing himself so that Laura can escape with the tools. Finding an account of a World War II era Japanese military and Nazi scientific expedition to the island that sought a way to harness the storm as a weapon, Laura decides to explore a coastal tomb where she finds the remains of a samurai in general who committed seppuku, which is Japanese, in su which is which means suicide in Japanese. It is revealed in the message he left that he led the Queen's Storm Guard, that the Oni defended the, mon the monastery, and that the Queen's successor took her own life rather than receive the Sun Queen's power, leaving the Sun Queen trapped in her body after death, and her rage has manifested as the storms. Laura realizes that the Ascension is not a ceremony to crown a new queen, but rather a ritual that transfers the original Sun Queen's soul into a new body. Himiko's spirit wants to escape its current body, and Matthias plans to offer Sam as a new host. Laura returns to the survivors on the beach to find that women has betrayed them. Abducting Sam and handing her over to Matthias, Laura, Jonah, and Reyes give chase, heading up a river to the monastery, with Laura arriving just in time to see Whitman killed by the Oni. After finding her way through both the Solari and the Storm Guard, Laura arrives at the top of the monastery where Matthias is performing the Ascension Ritual. Himiko's petrified remains burst with paranormal energy, violently channeling into Sam. Laura fights her way to the central platform, where she kills Matthias using a pistol she took from him in the struggle and her own simultaneously before plunging her torch into Himiko's re remains, destroying her and, and saving Sam. 
with the storms to prize Laura, Sam, Ray, and Jonah leave the island and are picked up by a cargo ship. As she and her friends sail home, Laura comes to realize her father's stories and mythical tales may be more fact than fiction and resolves to uncover them, stating that she isn't returning home just yet. If you guys, well, if I give a score for this amazing Tomb Raider game, I would give it a 9 out of 10. This is a beautiful game, you guys, that is meant to be played. If you guys like the gameplay elements from Uncharted with a really good story, top-notch voice acting, and a great 20-25 hour single-player campaign experience with some horror, quick-time events, action, platforming, shooting, all here and there with, with some great action elements, definitely get Tomb Raider in your collection. It was one of my Game of the Years for 2013. And I'm proud to say that game was definitely my game of the year. I've been a long time Tomb Raider fan since the very beginning. And I must say this reboot of a game is spectacular. So if you guys love the older Tomb Raider installments and want something fresh that has the origin of Lara Croft of how she was originally formed with archaeological moments here and there. Tomb Raider is the game that you must get for your PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the PC and the OS devices. This game is meant for your collection. Anyway, if you guys really enjoyed my review for Tomb Raider, definitely leave a comment section down below. Let me know how, how well I've done in this review. And I'm sorry I, I was rushing in this video, mainly because I'm not feeling very well. So I had to go and get this video out from my YouTube channel whenever possible. But I promise that the next review, next video I will do, I will not completely fucked up with my lines. And there you have it. If you guys enjoyed my review for Tomb Raider, leave a comment section down below. And also be, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It will really help me out a lot. As always, I'm the Ultimate Gamer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Get the fuck out, my friends.